Hello, brothers and sisters. Join us in praying the rosary. We'll give you a moment to grab your rosaries. All right, are you ready? Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, a world without end. Amen. The first luminous mystery is the baptism of Christ. We offer this mystery to all the servants that generously gave their time, talent, treasure to Biblioponia for the past year. We pray for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit for them to continue being our, your instrument of love, to every person that needs to hear your word, O Lord. May they continue to find joy in serving the Lord and making you the focus of their life. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. 
Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from fires of hell, and lead all souls into heaven, especially those in most need of your mercy. Mother Mary, through your intercession, we beg you, please bring peace to our families, to our communities, to our country, and to the whole world. Amen. The second luminous mystery is the wedding feast at Cana. We offer this mystery to all the people that watch our episodes. We pray for an expectant and open heart for an encounter with you. O oh Lord, and to receive your special message to us. We believe that you are transforming all of us to become better version of ourselves. We trust in your timing, O oh Lord. And just like in the waiting at Cana, we know that our miracle will come when we need him the most. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour for our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and never shall be, world without end. Amen. 
O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls into heaven, especially those most in need of your mercy. Mother Mary, through your intercession, we beg you, please bring peace to our families, to our community, to our country, and to the whole world. Amen. The third luminous mystery is the proclamation of the coming of the kingdom of God. We offer this mystery for the souls who were taken by the COVID-19. Welcome them into your kingdom, dear Lord. Grant them peace and heavenly rest. We also pray for their families and loved ones. May they find comfort and consolation in you as they grieve. Mama Mary, embrace them with your loving arms. Embrace them with your loving arms. And lead them closer to your son, Jesus. As a special prayer petition, we leave up to you the soul of our dearly beloved Father Michael LaGuardia. May our hearts that are grieving for him be comforted and may find joy in trusting your will, O Lord, at these trying times. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls into heaven, especially those in most need of your mercy. Mother Mary, to your intercession, we beg you, please bring peace to our families, to our community, to our country, and to the whole world. Amen. The fourth luminous mystery is the transfiguration. We pray for the light of Jesus' family, especially the Feast Bay area and all spiritual communities, that we may all be 
may all continue to, to be Jesus to everyone we encounter. May we as one community continue to be a reflection of God's glory by being channels of His mercy and love. Help us to be more faithful as we continue to strive to be in union with the heart of Jesus through Mary's, Mary's heart and, and the imitation of her spirit through her virtues. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your, of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and never shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls into heaven, especially those in most need of your mercy. Mother Mary, through your intercession, we beg you, please bring peace to our family, to our community, to our country, and to the whole world. Amen. The fifth luminous mystery is the institution of the Eucharist. We offer this mystery for the Catholic Church and all the Catholic Church leaders and priests across the world. May they always encounter you in the Eucharist and be empowered by your love and mercy. May the actions of our church leaders lead us always to you, O Lord. Purify their intentions and actions through Mother Mary's help and guidance. We also pray for our brother Kaloy Carcilar. Father Paulo Asperer, Father Albert Garong, and our spiritual advisor, Father Bob McConhey. Mama Mary, Mother of the Eternal Priest, we ask for your intercession to bless their labors, to comfort them in, the, in their time of need, and to keep them within the shelter of your son's sacred heart. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without an amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins. Save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls into heaven, especially those in most need of your mercy. Mother Mary, through your intercession, we beg you, please bring peace to our families, to our community, to our country, and to the whole world. Amen. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy. Hail our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To you do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To you do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, O most gracious Advocate, your eyes of mercy towards us, and after this our exile, show to us the blessed fruit of your womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. We now pray the litany of the blessed Virgin Mary. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. God, the Father of heaven, have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Holy Mary, pray for us. Holy Mother of God, pray for us. Holy Virgin of Virgins, pray for us. Mother of Christ, pray for us. Mother of the Church, pray for us. Mother of Mercy, pray for us. Mother of Divine Grace, pray for us. Mother of Hope, pray for us. Mother Most Pure, pray for us. Mother most chaste, pray for us. Mother inviolate, pray for us. Mother undefiled, pray for us. Mother most amiable, pray for us. Mother most admirable, pray for us. Mother of good counsel, pray for us. 
Mother of our Creator, pray for us. Mother of our Savior, pray for us. Virgin Most Prudent, pray for us. us. Virgin Most Venerable, pray for us. Virgin Most Renowned, pray for us. Virgin Most Powerful, pray for us. Virgin Most Merciful, pray for us. Virgin Most Faithful, pray for us. Mirror of Justice, pray for us. Sin of Wisdom, pray for us. Cause of our Joy, pray for us. Spiritual Vessel, pray for us. Vessel of Honor, pray for us. Singular Vessel of Devotion, pray for us. Mystical Rose, pray for us. For us, Tower of David, pray for us. Tower of Ivory, pray for us. House of Gold, pray for us. Ark of the Covenant, pray for us. Gate of Heaven, pray for us. Morning Star, pray for us. Health of the Sick, pray for us. Refuge of Sinners. Pray for us. Solace of migrants. Pray for us. Comforter of the afflicted. Pray for us. Help of Christians. Pray for us. Queen of angels. Pray for us. Queen of patriarchs. Pray for us. Queen of prophets. Pray for us. Queen of apostles. Pray for us. Queen of Martyrs, pray for us. Queen of Confessors, pray for us. Queen of Virgins, pray for us. Queen of All Saints, pray for us. Queen Conceived Without Original Sin, pray for us. Queen Assumed Into Heaven, pray for us. Queen of the Most Holy Rosary, pray for us. Queen of the Family, Pray for us. Queen of peace. Pray for us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Spare us, O Lord. God, you take away the sins of the world. Graciously hear us, O Lord. God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. That we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray, only begotten Son, by his life, death, and resurrect resurrection, has purchased for us the rewards of eternal salvation. Grant, we pray, that, may, that by meditating upon these mysteries of the Most Holy Rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may imitate what they contain and obtain what they promise through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. We now pray the litany of cross. From the belief that I have to earn your love. Deliver me, Jesus. The fear that I am unlovable. Deliver me, Jesus. False that I have what it takes. Deliver me, Jesus. From the fear that trusting you will leave me more destitute. Deliver me, Jesus. All suspicion of your words and promises. Deliver me, Jesus. Against childlike dependency on you. Deliver me, Jesus. Refusals and reluctances in accepting your will. Deliver me, Jesus. From anxiety about the future. Deliver me, Jesus. From resentment of excessive preoccupation with the past. Deliver me, Jesus. From restless self-seeking in the present. Deliver me, Jesus. From disbelief in your love and presence. Deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being asked to give more than I have. Deliver me, Jesus. From the belief that my life has no meaning or worth. Deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of what love demands. Deliver me, Jesus. From discouragement. Deliver me, Jesus. That you are continually holding me, sustaining me, loving me. Jesus, I trust in you. 
that your love goes deeper than my sin and failing and then transform me. Jesus, I trust in you. That not knowing what tomorrow brings is an invitation to lean on you. Jesus, I trust in you. That you are with me in my suffering. Jesus, I trust in you. That my suffering united to your own will bear fruit in this life and the next. Jesus, I trust in you. That you will leave me, that you will not leave me orphan, that you are present in, in your church. Jesus, I trust in you. That your plan is better than anything else. Jesus, I trust in you. That you always hear me and in your goodness always respond to me. Jesus, I trust in you. That you give me the grace to accept forgiveness and to forgive others. Jesus, I trust in you. That you give me all the strength I need for what is asked. Jesus, I trust in you. That my life is a gift. Jesus, I trust in you. That you will teach me to trust you. Jesus, I trust in you. That you are my Lord and my God. Jesus, I trust in you. That I am your beloved one. Jesus, I trust in you. Amen. May the divine assistance remain always with us. Amen. May the souls of the faithful departed, especially Father Michael, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. May the blessings of the Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon us and remain with us always. Amen. Thank you for praying with us tonight. Please be ready with your pen, notebook, and Bible because Father Michael Aguardia's Biblia Cunia will be back after a short break. It's Biblia Cunia. Will, will we say it again? Biblia Cunia. Okay, so the way to pronounce the Greek is to pronounce every syllable. Okay, so um, it's not actually Biblia Cunia, but Biblia Cunia. It's a coined term of two Greek terms. One is Biblia. Biblia comes from the Greek Biblion, okay, which is book, singular. When you put it in the plural, it becomes Biblia. It's now books as a collection. Okay, so Biblia is a collection of books. It's many books. And konia comes from the word diakonia. See, you don't pronounce it that jaconia. <laughs> Gagalit yung mga Greeks kapag narinig na yan. But you say, diakonia. Yeah. Ano yung diakonia? Diakonia is service. Um, deacons are meant to serve. That's the ministry of a deacon, to serve. So, diakonia is, diakonia is service. So, put the two words together. You have, what is the word? The Bible is God's language of love. It's like you want to hear beautiful messages of love from God. What do you read? You read the Bible. Gusto mo nga pick up lines ni Lord? Read the Bible. Gusto mo na mga lines that would comfort you during desolation, that would give you strength during moments of weakness, that would give you comfort when you are distressed? Read the Bible. So this is God's language of love. The Word of God is not something. The Word of God is someone.
Jesus, you never fail. I believe in your word. I believe in your promise. I believe you reveal your plans that.
Hello, brothers and sisters. Hello. It's good to be back here in Bibliophonia. How are you guys doing? It's almost weekend. Nine days to go before Christmas, right? Yeah. Dean. Talaga, talaga, you know, you, nine days na lang. Tama. Nine days na lang. Kasi it's already 16. Tama. Ang galing mo sa math, Vina. But yeah, uh, yeah, welcome back, Vina. And before anything else, Vina, no, um, napansin mo, Christmas tree ko sa likod. <laughs> wow. Ganda. <laughs> Diba? Naganda tayo today and uh, baka napansin din, maybe our viewers are now seeing yung, yung top ko, yung suit ko, similar to what the priests are wearing, diba? What I only lack is the white thing at the center. <laughs> I forgot what it's called. But anyway, friends, good evening, brothers and sisters. How is everyone doing? Yes, as what Vina has mentioned, it's already nine days um, uh, before Christmas and with that, clerical collar, sabi ni Ace, clerical collar. <laughs> I'm tied to channel Father Bob, Father Pao, Father Albert here. But anyway, friends, uh, tonight is our uh, last episode for this year, 2021. And with that, Vina, diba, we have something special for our viewers later on. But before we go into that, before we may excite Vina, no, um, I would like to uh, welcome you all to Father Michael Aguardia's Biblia Conia. So my name again is Brother Dean, your friend. Uh, your servant here at the Feast at Home Bay Area District. And my partner here is... Hi, I'm Vina, also your sister and your co-servant here at Feast Mall of Asia. All right. So friends, again, uh, this is Father Michael Laguardia's Biblia Conia. This evening, uh, we are going to have a uh, dive deep into the Sunday Mass readings. Of course, we're going to talk about the first, second reading. We're going to touch as well the responsorial sum. And of course, the main need, which is the Gospel. Uh, with the help of uh, Father Pau Asper SSP later on, in the hope of having a better and a uh, simple way of understanding the Word of God, as, as well as for us to share it with, with our friends uh, and, and our community. So that's part one. And of course, another uh, important part of our um, activity or session or ministry this evening is the big message from our spiritual advisor, Father Bob McConaughey himself, all the way from the States. Dive. And this third important part as well, friends, is uh, your chance to send in your questions about faith, about religion, about the Catholic Church, about the saints, about the sacraments, maybe about Christmas. If you want to know something about Christmas, how the symbolism and all, friends, go ahead, uh, send, their, send uh, your questions uh, via posting in our comment section or sending us a private message both on Facebook and mm -hmm in YouTube. So again, friends, this evening we have uh, three special activities. First is the exegesis, uh, deep dive into the gospel, into the Sunday Mass readings. Big message from our main man, uh, Father Bob, and of course the Q&A, which the questions will be coming from you this evening. So friends, right, again, again, yes, Vina, we encourage them to send in their questions this evening because those who will be answering their questions will have a special uh, Ganap <laughs> later on, Vince, right? Yes, that's right, Dean. So I'm so also excited for that, no? Ano kaya yon? <laughs> mm -hmm. But before that, I also want to say good evening to our viewers here on Facebook from the Facebook pages of Feast PICCAM, Feast PICCPM, Feast OPM, Feast Manila, Feast Ermita, Light of Jesus, and of course, the Feast Mall of Asia singles and Feast Mall of Asia. Hello also to our viewers there in our YouTube account, Feast Mall of Asia. Hi! Yes, good evening. And uh, with that, friends, please share this blessing since this is our last episode for this year, 2021. Uh, let your friends know, let your office mates know that uh, Father Michael Abordes Biblia Colnia is live the live this Thursday evening by sharing the stream or tagging them in the comment section. Now na. Yes, that's right. <laughs> so since na wala ako for quite some time, Dean, kamusta ka naman? <laughs> I'm doing good, Vince. And by the way, thank you so much. Good job, ha. Uh, for those two. Ang galing. I mean, sumilip ako. I, I try to uh, take a look. And uh, thank you as well na, to, to your partners, uh, Brother Pong and uh, Sis Marge, no? who, who helped uh, this ministry di ba? Uh, during those times. But uh, ayan, Vince, I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that you're back and now in our last episode for this year, 2021. Kompleto. Kompleto yung pamilya natin, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Ayan. So I'm I'm also happy, no, kasi 
habang nawala ako, God really took that chance for me to rest yung body ko. And ang dami kong natutunan. And ang daming blessing na binigay ni Lord sa akin. And uh, I want to share that it's a simple yes that it started here. When I said mm. yes to hosting here, sunod-sunod yung <laughs> blessings na binibigay ni Lord for opportunities. <laughs> So, host yeah. for all seasons ba yan, Vin? <laughs> for yeah, all parang, seasons. parang ganun eh. <laughs> uh, that's, that's good to hear, Vince, and we're happy and everybody's happy that uh, you're part of the ever-growing family of Father Michael Aguardes, Biblia Conia. But, Vince, I, I would also like to highlight, no, we've already mentioned at the start, that since this is our uh, special episode for this year, um, uh, we are going to give a special something for our viewers. So, Friends, this evening, before we end this show, 10, sampu, 10 of those who will be uh, sending in their questions in the comment section will have a chance to win a special prize. Gcash po, mga kaibigan. <laughs> yung amount, later ko nasasabihin yung amount. But we will be again drawing uh, 10 lucky winners from those who will be uh, sending in their thoughts. And insane questions for Father Bob and uh, <laughs> Brother Kaloy later on. So friends, if you have questions talaga na feeling nyo hindi pa nasasagot since time immemorial, even those of you who asked their questions in the previous months that are still left unanswered, um, unfortunately, please uh, send them again para naman makita namin siya, ma-highlight siya. But, uh, again, before we end the show, we are going to uh, pick randomly via raffle 10 lucky winners who will receive um, a special... Uh, Gcash prize from uh, your family here in Father Michael Aguardas Biblia Konia. Mga little things ng for Christmas. <laughs> Sakto, Exciting. No, for Christmas, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Give away. And uh, because of that, Dean, I'm so excited not to know what's that. But mm -hmm. for tonight, I want to formally introduce our Feast Mall of Asia, our brother, our builder, and Brother Dido Lobato to lead us into prayer and, of course, his opening message. Hi, Brother Dido! Merry, Merry, Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Oh, thank you so much for always being faithful to, to do our Biblia Konia. And I just have a very quick message to everybody. Have a ako ng sleeping hair. <laughs> Welcome to the last Biblia Konia, Father Michael Aguardas Biblia Konia. This is our one last uh, 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 program for the rest of the year, and we're gonna give time for our family, for our for our teams to have a rest. And uh, again, first of all, so much wonderful uh, and grateful chance to tell everybody thank you for making this work every thursday to our priests to our uh to our volunteers to our production team to our hosts and everybody behind this biblia Konia, father michael lagorgia's biblia Konia. thank you thank you and, and yes father michael uh, would be smiling down on us that we're continuing this and i I'd like to reflect on this Bible verse. Can we flash it on the screen, please? Um, I'd like to share a reflection on this one. Let me read it first to you. Jeremiah 17, verse 7 to 8. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. He is like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream and does not fear when heat comes, for its leaves remain green and is not anxious in the year of drought, for it does not cease to bear fruit. Keep it there. Uh, we're ending the year. Uh, Personally and professionally, I am very grateful to God that uh, we're, we're ending the year in a fruitful, fruitful way. Firstly, uh, as a doctor in, in the maritime industry with a clinic that we're leading, we're so blessed that uh, we are, you know, we are not ceasing to bear fruit. And uh, the situation has become an opportunity to bring back care to healthcare, and we've been very fruitful in helping people, in profits also. And, and, you know, I just have to give you my thought at the start of the year. I'm not kidding. At the start of the year, I was like, Lord, <laughs> what does this year look like? <laughs> I, and and I, 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 I made a decision last start of the year, January, that Lord, this is your year. 
and um, you know, I planted the. Uh, I planted my trust in the Lord, and yes, yes, it was a hard, difficult year. It wasn't easy. We lost Father Michael Laguarza. We had different surges of COVID, and 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 a lot of other things. Um, you know what? I, my one last reminder for our Father Michael Laguarza's Bibliaconia family as we end the year is that we can sometimes look into our hardships. Now we're at the end of the year and sometimes we're reflecting back and say, those were, you know, the last few months were hard. This year was difficult. I got hurt. We got hurt. And it's so easy to zoom, to zoom in, to, 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 to always highlight the hurts and the hardships. But I want to remind everybody to trust his heart, trust God's heart. When we look at our hurts, when we look at our hardships, we feel the pain, we share the pain, but it does not end there. God can always turn our mourning into dancing and some of us may be ending the year fruitly, fruitfully, some not so much, but whatever comes ahead, that's my, my prayer by 2022, is to keep ourselves grounded. We, we trust in the Lord. We trust in God's heart. That even through the hardships and through the hurts, He heals. He renews. We stand strong. And as I speak now, I have friends and I have colleagues in Cebu. They're being hit hard by a typhoon. And it's just about starting in there and i've seen videos of my colleagues house there and and really it's 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 not an easy time again for them but again sometimes in a breaking god can reveal his blessing and you know what you and i got hurt and experienced hardship this year let's focus that it allowed us it exposed us to God's heart, where we will find our healing, our hope, our blessing. I pray that you end this year trusting the Lord for what he has done and what he is doing. And my old prayer also for our family here gathered. If you're watching this on replay, welcome. You're still part of us. I pray that this coming 2022, you continually trust his heart. He knows best. You no, know, I always say this, that it's in the Bible that God works everything to work out for our good according to, to, to his purpose. And I believe that God is good. And with that belief and faith, I step out in faith and say, my response is, I will continue to seek the good, to do good to myself and to others rooted and planted in God's heart. And we will never be alone. We will be filled. We will be provided. So when the heat comes, when the hardships come, we know they will still come. <laughs> we know. We know they will still come. We will remain green <laughs> and fruitful. And we will not be anxious. Because our root, our, we are grounded in the heart of God. I pray that you continue to trust God. And uh, it has been a wonderful year, not an easy year. But we thank God and we trust God that he's, he knows what he's doing this 2021. and 2022, we continue to trust this. I love you guys. It's been a pleasure to be one with you. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart that we still get to do this together. And we will see you next year. Let's come into prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, we choose to think of you, how you have provided, how you have carried us through the year. We look at our healing, our hope, the provisions, the blessing that you've given, 
And sometimes we, not, we may not fully understand what you're doing. If I cannot understand, and if I cannot trust what's happening, I know that I can trust your heart. I trust your plan. I trust you. And so we commit the end of 2021. We close this with Thanksgiving. And for 2022, Lord, we continue to be grounded in you. To put our trust in you. That we may not wither. But we will not be anxious. And we will continue to be fruitful. Only through you, Lord. Only through you. Mama Mary, pray for us and be with us. This is our united prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Trust God. Trust his heart, guys. God bless you. See you next year. <laughs> Thank you so much, Brother Didoy. Very wonderful opening message and very blessed um, prayer. <clears throat> so, Gabby, may not may talagang ni notes ko siya no nat natuto ko dun sa <laughs> um, um, sinabi um, ni brother <laughs> oh oh um, bilis na pa notes si Vina yeah can you share yeah. it with us Vina uh, in every loss there is so much gain yun talaga yung nakuha ko dun and God really reveals his blessing in every yes. um, hardship and pain that we had and right. we get to see what's uh, what's the blessing that I see here is that we get to see God so really have faith lang talaga these things that is happening especially in Cebu right now mm-hmm. is opening our minds and our hearts to really focus on Jesus yeah if you think Vina no the, the year started with uncertainty and yeah. then the, the, the of course our, our beloved father Michael also you know diba? and uh, the, 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 the what do you call this one the vaccines have started to roll out. Cases mm-hmm. were, you know, moving and all. Mm-hmm. So ngayon, December, last month of the year, may pahabol pang new variant of the virus and the, the, the typhoon. Mm-hmm. So you can never really tell, but uh, true to what you shared in Brother Didoy, as long as there is faith, all these challenges will subside. Diba? Yeah. We can survive. We can survive this year. All right, so beautiful, uh, beautiful uh, sharing, uh, Vina. Thank you for that. And so, Vince, and to our dear friends, um, uh, let's be, let's continue rather this evening by having our exit Jesus, or rather our uh, deep dive into our Sunday mass readings. This time with with the presence, with the help of our friend, our uh, teacher, Father Paula's prayer SSP. Hello, Feasters. I hope and pray that you're having a meaningful, a fruitful Advent uh, Christmas uh, journey or pilgrimage. We are now uh, at the, on the fourth uh, Sunday of Advent, and uh, the main theme of our readings uh, uh, can be encapsulated in the in a phrase, Christmas joy. The usual greeting that we hear is, uh, Merry Christmas or a joyful Christmas. But what really is the substance or stuff of our Christmas joy? Is our joy simply emotion or decision? And how authentic is our joy? Is it a joy of escapism from the tensions, from the problems or worries of life? Like uh, in the movie Lion King. Is Christmas joy or happiness hakuna matata, a stress-free, tension-free, problem-free you know, life? Is our joy something forced? Or is it something that we seek and struggle to find? Or what we call Christian joy is something beyond us and within us, which is the presence of God in us and among us, in as much as uh, God has been present in the characters you know, of the Christmas story, you know, especially our Blessed Mother, Mary. So here are the readings uh, for the fourth Sunday of Advent. You know, the first reading, the ruler of Israel is promised you know, to come from Bethlehem. Uh, responsorial Psalm, Psalm 80 is a, a prayer for God's uh, salvation. Uh, the second reading is uh, all about, you know, uh, the obedience of the Son of God. 
Through his obedience to God's will, Christ consecrated all and everyone. And we have in the gospel reading is uh, the visitation of Mary to Elizabeth. And Mary sings praise. And Elizabeth sings praise to Mary and her child. So some points for reflection. Number one. Our Blessed Mother is a, a model of true Christian joy. And for our Blessed Mother, the only and true source of joy is the presence of her son, Jesus Christ. And so we say that the joy coming from Mary with the presence of Christ is something shared, is something missionary. Second point, ultimate joy comes from seeing God. That is our responsorial son and believing and obeying God's word and God's will. That's our second meaning as manifested by the son of God himself, Jesus Christ. And third point, we do not seek joy, but it is actually joy that seeks or uh, surprises us. God's joy is uh, certainly a much larger encompassing reality. The gospel reading. Mary visits Elizabeth. During those days, Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Most blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believe that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, in the scene of Mary's uh, visitation, the two annunciation accounts of John and of Jesus, they are brought together. And in this encounter, the elderly Elizabeth represents God's work among the people of ancient Israel. So Mary, our mother, she represents the new work that God will do in the sending of the Messiah. And uh, in Elizabeth, the old esteems the new. And in Mary, the new honors the old. So we have here, you know, the New Testament. The New Testament beginning in Jesus comes to sanctify the Old Testament, ending in John in its last prophet. So we have here in the visitation, it is the meeting point of the old and the new covenant, a new outpouring of the Holy Spirit that fulfills and goes beyond all prophecies. You know? And uh, it has come to prepare John for a specific mission. So when Mary greets her relative, Elizabeth is filled with the Holy Spirit and she responds with a song of blessing. Elizabeth then blesses Mary and the child within her. She recognizes and rejoices in God's action as he did before and calls Mary the mother of her Lord. Now Elizabeth here, she anticipates the faith of the disciples of Jesus and of all later Christians who come to a faith in Jesus as the risen Lord. No, now the joyful leaping of John within Elizabeth's womb in the presence of Jesus within Mary, it recalls the joyful leaping and dancing of King David before the Ark of the Old Covenant. You know, some Bible scholars uh, see today's gospel episode as an allusion to the Virgin Mary as the new Ark of the Covenant, one of the titles in the Litany of the Saints. You know, uh, if we recall, David and all the Israelites brought the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem with shouts of joy. Uh, that's from the first book of Kings. 
So similarly, the Shekinah or the presence of the Lord was contained in the ark. Now in the new ark, the womb of our Blessed Mother, containing God's permanent presence among His people. The Word made flesh. So here, Christian joy is uh, the abiding presence of God in our lives. Christian joy is the abiding presence of God in our lives. You know? And the good news must not be delayed. You know? The good news must not be delayed. You know? And why? Because it is the very abiding presence of God. It is the best news that we can hear and listen and commit to. You know? So here, Elizabeth's song ends with a further blessing of Mary because she believes in the fulfillment of God's word. The fulfillment by the Holy Spirit is grounded in Mary's faith in God the Lord. And uh, just as it depends on the faith of all Christians whose model Mary is. So the fulfillment and transformation in Jesus of God's Old Testament is the, the central theme in the Gospel of you. So we have here a God of surprises. God of surprises. Of course, uh, our Blessed Mother, she was very excited you know, to, to share the good news with uh, her cousin Elizabeth. That is why we say joy has to be shared to become double joy. All right? So this joy that we're talking about is a missionary joy. Christian joy is not meant to be what? To be uh, contained within us and just among us. But this Christian joy must be uh, spread. It must be shared because this is good news. All right. The best present, of course, is one's presence. All right. Okay. So uh, we have here, uh, you know, the, the meeting of our Blessed Mother. The meeting of our Blessed Mother. Yeah. The meeting of our Blessed Mother and uh, her cousin Elizabeth. You know, uh, when this, uh, with this COVID-19 pandemic, of course, there are restrictions. But again, we can be present online, you know, uh, through Viber. You know, why? Because our best present is truly our very presence. You know, of course, the virtual present presence does not replace the face-to-face, -face, you know, physical presence. You know, pero yun po ang available at the moment. You know? But whenever it is possible, of course, you know, uh, we we. Uh, we become present to our loved ones this Advent Christmas season. Christian joy is God's abiding presence in our lives. You know? That is our point a while ago. You know? And uh, of course, uh, it is the very person of God himself. You know? That God himself is not just an idea. God himself is not just a concept. God himself is not just, you know, a figment of the imagination, but God is very much present in the very person of our Lord Jesus Christ. Visitation is not only the paradigm of God in our lives, it is also the way we enter each other. So what kind of visitor are you? What kind of visitor are you? You know, when God visits us this Christmas, this Advent season, how prepared are we? Would we truly recognize God you know, visiting us, visiting our homes, visiting our hearts? All right. So it is the only way in which God can enter our lives. He would visit us. Of course, uh, you know, uh, the key to, to uh, opening the door you know, when God visits us, lies in our hands. All right. Daily life is where divine grace and human beings 
most often intersect. So it's the Lord's work and our response, you know, takes place, you know, not just in moments of high drama, but it is actually in the ordinary transactions of human contact and care. So uh, who would have thought that Mary's simple helping visit, you know, uh, that, that joyful visit to Elizabeth was already Elizabeth's Christmas. So what are the simple Simple gestures of hope, of love, of faith, of compassion. Can we share this Christmas? All right. First reading from Micah. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, least among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be a ruler in Israel, whose origin is from of old from ancient times. Therefore, the Lord will give him up until the time when she who is to give birth has born, and the rest of his kindred shall return to the children of Israel. He shall take his place as shepherd by the strength of the Lord, by the majestic name of the Lord his God. And they shall dwell securely, for now his greatness shall reach to the ends of the earth. He shall be peace. If Assyria invades our country and treads upon our land, we shall raise against it seven shepherds, eight of royal standing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So here, the prophet Micah, the prophet Micah, uh, decries the sins of both Israel and Judah. And he foretells the downfall of Israel and Judah. Although most of the book of the prophet Micah deals with uh, the shadow side of the Israelite life. You know, uh, Micah, his prediction of the future son of David presents an interesting and striking contrast. So the prophet here, he singles out the town of David Bethlehem or Ephrathah, located in Judah as the place of hope. So it was in Bethlehem that Jesse, you know, David's father, he lived and David and his brothers were raised. So the town was indeed insignificant. It was small. And its importance lay in the fact that as David's hope, it was the geographical point of origin for the future Messiah. So here we have here, you know, uh, God's plan seems comes to us in an unexpected way. Bethlehem, an insignificant town, was uh, chosen to be a place of hope, a place of the origin of the future Messiah. So there is no inference that the Messiah need to be born in Bethlehem, although the evangelists Matthew and Luke you know, uh, uh, places, uh, Jesus, place Jesus' birth in Bethlehem. So the emergence of the Messiah uh, is part of God's plan from an early stage. Uh, the period of exile and separation, it will last until the Messiah's birth, at which time the dispersed population will once again be restored to its homeland. So unlike the past uh, monarchs who had incurred uh, God's wrath, the future king, empowered and fortified by the Lord, will be solicitous, would be taking care you know, of the well-being of his people. And his rule will be permanent. It will be universal. It will be all-encompassing. And with this, you know, the end of all conflict, he will be identified as Prince of Peace or Peace itself. Second reading. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. For this reason, when he came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. Holocausts and sin offerings you took no delight in. 
And I said, as is written of me in the scroll, Behold, I come to do your will, O God. First, he says, sacrifices and offerings, holocausts and sin offerings, you neither desire nor delight in him. These are offered according to the law. And he says, Behold, I come to do your will. He takes away the first to establish the second. By this will, we have been consecrated through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So we have here the passage from Hebrews, and it summarizes the Christian mentality or view or outlook of salvation. So in contrasting uh, Jewish sacrifices with the offering of Jesus, it sees uh, Jesus' offering as both superior and exclusive. You know? Why? Because it is God himself who offers his very self, his very person. So Jesus' offering is bodily. It is something incarnational. It is something personal. It is something concrete. And with this, God himself offering, it supersedes, it replaces all you know, material and worthy offerings. And his suffering has unlimited efficacy. So a very important to note is the efficacy of Christ's obedience. It was obedient suffering. It was loving suffering. Uh, it was God's will that redemption and consecration be accomplished through the sacrifice of his son. Jesus uh, made uh, this will his own and through his obedient you know, self-donation, self-offering, he established a new covenant, a new people of God. And we also have the responsorial son. Psalm 80. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face and we shall be saved. So this uh, psalm is actually a prayer, you know, coming from a beleaguered people. And they are seeking for God's deliverance. God is mighty. God is at the same time powerful. And we, they are hoping in God's power and might. But again, the might and power of God is his very compassion, his, very, uh, his mercy upon his people because he is a shepherd. And again, another image you know, uh, for, for, for God is uh, he's like a vine. You know, and Israel is like, you know, uh, you know uh, yeah, the vine. Israel is God's vine. Right, so a point, some points for reflection. You know, uh, are how open are we to allow ourselves to be surprised by God this Christmas? Our God is a God of surprises. So, who would have thought that the barren Elizabeth would uh, have her own child? Who would have thought that Mary, Mary? It's a, you know, a virgin birth. Of course, uh, uh, these are all surprises of God. And God is always ready to reveal himself in a new way to us. So how open are we to receive divine wonders and amazements? Act. We pray. Mighty Lord, you have done great things for me and for all your people. Thank you for continuing to fulfill your promises to me and help me to be grateful for all you have done. Holy God, you chose Mary to be the mother of your son. Help me to be as willing to listen to you and as obedient to do your will as Mary. In Jesus' name, amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Feasters, may you have a meaningful, a fruitful, and a safe 
celebration of the Advent Christmas season. God bless you and mutual prayers. Wow. Um, first of all, thank you so much, um, Father Pao, for that beautiful um, Christmas. I, I can't say, Vina, if it's already a Christmas message. Parang, I, I, basta, for me, the, the, the biggest message that I got from, from, from Father Pao is all about surprises. You know, Vince, um, if, if I may ask you, do you like surprises or do you want to be spoiled? I want surprises, actually. <laughs> <laughs> we all love surprises, right? Yeah. And the biggest surprise in the story of the Bible is just like one of the biggest surprises, rather, in the in the, in the Bible is, you know, Elizabeth, diba? Who would have thought? Talabang term ni Father Pao, barren, diba? Who would have yeah. thought that a barren will still carry carry a blessing, diba? And of course. On the side of Mary, uh, she was uh, she con- uh, she conceived uh, with, the, with the help of the Holy Spirit. conception last week. So, um, in life, everything is full of surprises. So it's up to you to stay vigilant and be open for surprises. Surprises can be in the form of good or bad, right? Bin. So yeah. there's just hope for the best always because God is a God of surprises. What do you say, Vina? Ako naman, for me, um, um, I have three things I got here. Eh. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's about obedience and then the will obedience. and the testimony. Because uh, for mm-hmm. me, once we obey, we get to see what is the will of God to us. And when mm-hmm. we testify, people get to see the life in that. It's true. Right? So that's the surprise. Like, what mm-hmm. is it for you? Also, yes. later, no, may surprise tayo here sa Biblia. Ah. Na, and with that pa. surprise, <laughs> Vina, allow me to remind all of our viewers right now that um, bef- the, the cut-off, rather, of our um, pool of names will be uh, after the big message of Father Bob, but before the Q&A session. So, friends, if you have questions in mind about the Catholic faith, Catholic Church, or any of those uh, topics, please do send them in because later on, 10 lucky winners will get something special. A special Christmas gift, if I may say, from her family here in Father Michael Laguardia's Biblia Cunha. So, Vina, let's not keep them waiting. Another highlight this evening is the Christmas message from the Feast uh, Spiritual Advisor, our very own Father Bob McConaughey. Father Bob, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Father. Greetings, greetings from the United States of America and to all of you in the Philippines. I am homesick to get back home, but hopefully around the 9th of January, I'll be back. Uh, what Father said really about uh, uh, God of surprises is true. You know, the expectation was that he would be born in royalty and that he would be a great military leader. But the truth is that our God wanted to surprise everyone. And he came in the most unexpected way at the most unusual time and in the oddest of circumstances, you know. And every Christmas since, he has wanted to surprise us in different ways. Let me tell you a story, true story of something that happened a long time ago uh, in 1980. I was stationed at a big parish, St. James Parish in Easton, Pennsylvania. And it was one of those Christmas Eves that was absolutely perfect. Why? Because it was snowing. And not only was it snowing, it was a powdery snow. And it was about, oh, I'd say five inches of snow by, by, by the time for mass. And I had been talking to my brother, and he had just gotten a new car, and he was going to take my mom and dad down to my sister's in Virginia. And that's about a three-hour ride. And then I would join them the next day. And I knew the roads would probably be cleared by then. And they had left at 11 in the morning before the snow started. But the snow comes from the west to the east. So they were driving right into the snow. But I expected to hear from them by about 3.30 or 4 in the afternoon. And still I didn't hear from them that they arrived safely. I called my sister and I said, have you heard from them? She said, no. Then Dr. Fritzinger, who was a good friend of my brother's, uh, got word from Hershey Hospital that my brother and, and my mom and dad 
were in a 100 car pileup on the interstate and that they were taken to the hospital. I said, how are they? He said, I don't know. I didn't know whether his I don't know was he didn't want to tell me because he knew I was going to be saying mass or I don't know because he really didn't know. Apparently, my brother was able to get a message to him to call me. Well, Father Sheehan, the parish priest, said, he said, Bob, maybe, uh, uh, you know, I, I can take your mask for you. You're kind of upset. And I said, no, if, if, if I ever needed to say mass, I need to say mass now. And I remember all the joyousness of the mass was there. The people that were there, you know, they loved the fact that it was snowing. It was a beautiful Christmas snowy evening. And I remember saying mass and at the homily, I said, I'm going to make my, my homily rather short tonight. And I told them what was going on and asked them if they would pray for my family. And then, you know, I, I'm, I'm getting through the mass pretty good because I was just anxious to get to the end of it to find out what was going on. But then at the consecration, the priest says, this is my body. Then he said, this is my blood. And the image that I had in my mind when I said, this is my blood that came to my mind as a temptation was that my father and my mother may be gone and that I may have lost my whole family. And I don't know that right now. But I was able somehow emotionally, by God's grace, was able to get through the mass. And then I made my way over to the convent and Father Sheehan said to me, he just got a call. They're OK. Some, some bruises, some bumps, you know, things like that. But they're OK. And the fellow that sold my brother the car bought another car out to Hershey Hospital. That's where they make the candy bars, Hershey candy bars. And the presents, however, they couldn't find them because there were so many cars that were being towed away at so, so many locations. So there would be no Christmas presents at all coming from my mom and dad and, and my brother, Johnny. And the next day I, I drove down to Virginia and it was a different kind of Christmas than ever before. When I went in, you know, they were all very anxious to tell me the story and, and, and all the excitement about it and what happened and the specifics. But then when we sat down at dinner, I mean, there were no gifts. There was the gifts that my sister had bought for us, but the presents were really not important. Presence was, as Father alluded to. And when we sat down to eat, there was a now moment for me personally. What I mean about a now moment is I wasn't thinking about the past and what had happened. And I wasn't thinking at all about the future. It was just that one singular moment without words in which I knew how grateful and how much I loved each member of my family. And I wanted to express that. And I did it in a simple way. I wasn't elaborate or, or very emotional. I just wanted to let each of them know that I was grateful that God had woven them into the fabric of my life. We had no gifts except each other. It's kind of like the end of the Grinch that stole Christmas. If you ever watch that movie, either the cartoon or, or Jim Carrey, he had stolen all the presents and he had taken down all the decorations and he felt that he had stolen Christmas. And so he got up early the next morning and he was at the top of the big hill that led down to Whoville. And he was looking down to look for the sadness and the glumness and the and all the things that had gone on with them missing their presence. But something just the opposite was true, something surprising, something unexpected. Everybody was together around the empty bear tree singing Christmas carols. And at the end, it says the Grinch thought and he thought and he thought some more. Perhaps Christmas doesn't come from a store. This year, I encourage you to just be in the now, after these 21 months, during Simbaga B, to go to your room, maybe a half hour before everyone else goes to bed, and just say, Lord, it's me. I just want to come to, to be with you. 
And during those moments, don't think about your past. Because your past is over. It's not real anymore. And don't think about your future because you don't know what's going to happen the next day. As I found out, you just don't know. But yesterday kind of is like a canceled check. You know, tomorrow, a promissory note. That's why we say I, at the beginning of our song, we are the world uh, at, at uh, the feast every Sunday. What, what did I say at the beginning? The past is history. The future is mystery. Let us begin again. So each day, at the end of the day, try to just have a now moment in which you're simply with the Lord. And he loves you so much just for being with him. And you don't have to say anything. You don't have to produce anything. You simply relax in the nowness of a present moment. And when you do that often, you will begin to get a sense of what God is really trying to say to you at the deepest levels. That he loves you and embraces you for your past. He loves and embraces you for your weaknesses. He loves and embraces you for your successes. He loves and embraces you for what he has in mind and his plan for the future. And simply to, without even saying it, trust that that's the truth. No one can love you more in a now moment in which you're simply with him. You will notice over a period of time that you will have a deeper sense of his love for you of him actually being with you to embrace you. The way he came that first Christmas is the way he wants to come in to your heart quietly to just be with you. It reminds me of the lyrics by Neil Diamond of the song, Be, Be, as a page that aches for a word that speaks on a theme that is timeless and the one God will make for your way. Sing as a song in search of a voice that is silent and the one God will make for your day. This Christmas will be different than all of the Christmases of our past. Don't miss it. Enjoy it. Luxuriate in the fact that you made it through it and celebrate together with your family and try in the now moment of Christmas, perhaps when you give them the gift or just when you're with them to express gratitude that they've been with you through the ups and downs, the anger, the frustration, the arguments and the joyous times of the last 21 months and you survived and you're here and God loves you. And with that, I wish you all a Merry Christmas. Sorry, Dean, we can't hear you. Hi, Father Bob. Thank you so Hi. much for that wonderful uh, sharing that you had. No? Uh, Thanks, I got a key takeaways from what you have mentioned. It struck me when you mentioned about that the past is history, our future is mystery, and being with mm -hmm. the Lord is being the, in the now is really a gift and a surprise from God. Yes. How about you, Dean? You have key takeaways? Yeah, I, I love Father Bob's reminder to always be in the now, especially now that we have started to, 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 to attend gatherings. Most of us still think what's going to happen tomorrow or I should have done this yesterday. Hence, mm -hmm. we forget to uh, appreciate the now, those people who are uh, around us during that moment. So we have to be in the now. We have to be in the moment. Thank you for that, Father Bob. Welcome. All right. Hi, and Brother speaking, Kaloy. <laughs> yeah, speaking of uh, surprises, Vina, Brother Kaloy is also a surprise this <laughs> year. With the help of Father Bob, he became an instant part of our family. So, uh, Brother yeah. Kaloy, good evening. Merry Christmas. Surprise. Merry <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> Merry For you, Brother Kaloy. There he is. Yeah, uh, actually, I'm looking forward to the surprise that you were mentioning a while ago. What could that be? <laughs> yes. All right. So since you already mentioned that one, Brother Galoy, allow me again to remind 
our brothers and sisters who are watching live right now to please just say a simple hi or hello comment or even of course ask your questions because those names that you will be seeing in the comment section will be part of our raffle wherein we will be drawing 10 lucky winners of that special surprise from us, your friends here in the Father Michael Aguardias Biblia Conia. All right. So, uh, Vina, Father Bob, and Brother Kaloy, let's take in those questions from our viewers. All right. So, I I remember, um, Father Bob, when we ended our episode last Thursday here in the Philipp Philippine time, um, there was a hanging question about Mary. Can you remember that, Brother Kaloy? Yes. So, the hanging question, uh, Father Bob and Brother Kaloy, is that how... I think this is already a recurring question here in Bibliagonia, but still very relevant and important. So the question is, how do we respond to those non-believers who challenge our belief in Mother Mary as Catholics? Okay, when you say our belief in Mother Mary as Catholics, does that mean beliefs that she ever existed or beliefs mm -hmm. that there was a virgin birth? Usually the criticism is that you know, we treat her as if she were equal to Jesus, a goddess, right? Yes. And we have never really seen Mary that way. We see Mary as, you know, a very human, someone who never failed to love, someone who is mother of Jesus. And we're not trying to claim anything beyond that. I think from what Brother Colloy told me, his answer was to that question, last week, you know that all of these things that we say about Mary are really referring to Jesus. And that's true. You know, when she was asked to, you know, uh, ask Jesus to take care of the wine, you know, the first miracle that he ever did, she said, do whatever he tells you. She never really, if you look at all the things that Mary said, she never pointed to herself except to say, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. And simply that means he uses me in a loving way to bring the Savior to the world. And how could you be disbelieving, if you will, about a mom who would deliver to the world its Savior? So we do not make Mary a goddess. We do not pray to Mary. We ask Mary, Holy Mother of God, pray for us. And somehow people can also say, I don't know, how can Jesus... And no, I'm sorry, how can Mama Mary, how can the Blessed Mother be the mother of God when God existed before she did? That's a philosophical question. And the truth is, if you're going to become human fully, Jesus simply could have appeared in bodily mm -hmm. form. I mean, if he chose to, but he didn't. He chose to come into the world to be fully human in every way that we are, and there's only one way you can do that. And that is through being born of a woman. And in born, being born of a woman, the moment he was born, he was at that moment both God and man. Therefore, she is Mary, the mother of God who came into the world, right? So it's not like she was there before God even existed, but rather to say she's the instrument through which John and Jesus became fully human while at the same time being fully divine. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Father Bob. Your, your thoughts, uh, Brother Kaloy, again? One of my favorite books is the book written by the late uh, Archbishop Fulton Shin entitled The World's First Love. And uh, that book is about our Blessed Mother. Yeah. And this is uh, so this is a truth that some of our brothers and sisters couldn't understand about us. That we are so much in love with our Blessed Mother. We are so much thankful and grateful to her. It's because all the women have already been evaluated from Eve up to the last woman who will be born in history. And it was only the Blessed Mother who passed. And considering the truth about free will, about freedom, 
had the Blessed Mother rejected her vocation, we wouldn't have the Messiah. We wouldn't have a Savior. That's why the Blessed Mother really uh, played a very important role in the salvation history. It was through her fiat, it was through her yes, that the word became flesh. According to the Archbishop Fulton Sheen, uh, the words that the Blessed Mother said uh, during the visitation of the Archangel Gabriel, it was similar to the words that God used when he created the world. Let there be light. Let there be those words. But when the Blessed Mother uttered the words, let, uh, but in particular the words, let your will be done. Thy, word, uh, thy will be done. God became human. And it is something that is beyond everything. It is even beyond uh, the greatness of all the creation because God became human through the yes of the Blessed Mother. And that's what we are really grateful for. We are thankful for. That's why we are so much in love with the Blessed Mother. And... Uh, even Elizabeth herself said, blessed are you among women. We heard it uh, from Elizabeth herself. And uh, even our Lord Jesus Christ himself uh, in the gospel written by Luke, all the words that he was saying about, about being faithful, about... Uh, putting into action our faith, he was actually referring to the Blessed Mother. So this is something that uh, we cannot also force on other people. But we ourselves, we Catholics, we understand this. That's why our love for the Blessed Mother is unstoppable and it's mm -hmm. inevitable. <laughs> And uh, it is uh, natural to us. We cannot but love the Blessed Mother. Mm -hmm. I think if you sat down with, with people who are very critical of uh, Kaloy uh, and explained it in those terms, they would get it because it speaks to the truth that has to be in their hearts. And the way you've explained it, you know, uh, uh, through thoughts too of, of Bishop Sheen, but the way that, that you explained it is so clear Yes. Anybody could relate to that. It's mm -hmm. not esoteric. It's not. All, it's this is this is the truth. And and you know, hopefully that truth will set them free from any prejudice they might have against Catholics for believing yes. what we believe. That's correct. For for me, Father Bob and Brother Kalay, it's always to Jesus through Mary. Mary mm -hmm. intercedes for us, and. Uh, in 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 the in the humans uh in us humans generally no one can really um say no to a mother hence he always you know of course it through mama mary to convince his son jesus christ to you know to do to do things for us that's just my take simply put vina mm -hmm. yeah that um I have to say this question and ask this because yeah. we, we've talked about Mama Mary, right? So why is it that there are different phases of Mary? For the same reason, I think that there's different phases of us, all right? Uh, we are never exactly uh, showing ourselves in a singular way, but, you know, everything that Mary experienced is kind of similar to what we go through when you think about it, all right? Brother Colloy put it well, you know, that she could have said no 
She's mm-hmm. only 13 or 14 years old. Uh, is this real? And she knows she can be stoned to death for cheating on Joseph. And with all of that fear, she still freely said, be it done unto me according to your word. And, and, and you know, there's times when we are under pressure to make a decision. And we know that the consequences of making that decision could either be negative or positive, and we just don't have control over what happens next. We can look to Mama Mary. When Jesus uh, went missing on the caravan on the way back to Nazareth, and they thought that he was with a relative, no, he's not. And she makes it very clear that, you know, the angel didn't appear to her and say, don't worry, Mary, this is all in the script. He's going to be found. You'll find him. Not worry about it. No, for three days, they're looking for them. And she makes it very clear to Jesus, you know, why did you do this to us? So parents can relate to teenagers making decisions that drive them crazy. All right. And then, you know, to, to, to ponder all these things and keep them in their heart means that she didn't completely understand or receive any special revelations after the angel departed from her after the Annunciation. Joseph did, but she didn't. And then she went through really the rest of her life with Jesus, you know, in Nazareth. And it's the hidden life. All we know is is that, you know, they probably lost Joseph. So she knows what it's like to mourn the loss of a loved one, especially your husband. So there's many, many, many things that Mary experienced, sorrows, the Lord, you know, uh, being at the foot of the cross. I would imagine that her prayer would have been desperate. She's seeing someone suffer that she loves so much and so innocent. And wouldn't everything within her wanted to cry out, stop all of this? Or maybe she would have prayed that one more time, there'd be one more miracle. Jesus would come down from the cross as they were all yelling for him to do. And everybody would have believed. But no, because God said no to her prayer, there is salvation. So sometimes when we experience something we need desperately and we pray for it, maybe the Lord doesn't want us to settle for less than what he really wants to give us. And he calls us to trust him that he has the plan. So when you think about everything that you and I go through, especially this past 21 months, You know, and we see these different faces of Mary. We see our own face and our own life's experiences. And she knows what it's like. And that's why we can say to her, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Thank you for that, Father Bob. So I get to see a clearer picture why we have different faces of Mama Mary. So how about you, Brother Kaloy? Any thoughts on it? Our actually our first image of the Blessed Mother is the Mother of Perpetual Health, because that image is based on the painting of Saint Luke himself. So it is uh, one of the earliest images that we have of the Blessed Mother, and uh, I think one of the reasons also why we have different faces of the Blessed Mother is that uh, she has appeared to us every now and then in different uh, in different uh, appearances in different forms and uh, every time she appears it also depends on the signs of the times apparently the blessed mother is appearing depending on the need of that time and uh, for instance when she appeared to Juan Diego in the early, in Guadalupe, uh, she was clothed with the sun, with the sun and, uh, behind her, and then with the moon under her feet. And then uh, her clothes were decorated with stars. It was because at that time, people were still worshiping the heavenly bodies. And so that's why she was again pointing to her son that 
the real God is her son, our Lord Jesus Christ. That's why, look, the, the moon is just under my feet. <laughs> and the stars, they are just my clothing. And the sun is behind me. So that was uh, one of the messages. That's why he appeared, he appeared like that. And so the face of Mary at that time was that way. Uh, when she appeared to Bernadette Subiru in uh, Lourdes, uh, the Blessed Mother confirmed the truth about the Immaculate Conception. Because when she appeared to Bernadette Subiru, she wouldn't say her name. And uh, Bernadette Subiru would keep on uh, asking her, what is your name? And she wouldn't say. She wouldn't tell her name. But at the last time of her apparition, she said that she is the Immaculate Conception. That's why she really looked so pure, so immaculate. And uh, it was just then, at that time, that the church declared uh, the dogma on the Immaculate Conception. In the Lady of Fatima, her appearance is also different. Uh, because uh, she is uh, the Blessed Mother is asking for prayers. That's why she is uh, wearing uh, all white, asking for repentance so that there will be peace. As of that time, the world was very chaotic. Uh, we are, the world was at war at that time. So no wonder her appearance uh, she was in all white at that time when she appeared to the children in Fatima. So I think uh, the appearance on the Blessed Mother would also uh, de depend on how we saw her in her apparitions. That's why time and again, her face would also change. But we have to be clear on this, right, uh, Brother Galay, Father Bob? It's still... Regardless of, I mean, it's still Mother Mary. Yes. Regardless if it's oh, Our Lady of Lourdes, Guadalupe, yeah. Upper Petal, Actually, it's it's Mother Mary. Uh, I remember cracking a joke to my uh -huh. to my friend because uh, my friend Butch, who's a seminarian, is a devotee <laughs> of the Our Lady of Fatima, right. and I'm a devotee of the Our Lady of Guadalupe. And I ask her, I ask my friend, who's more powerful, the Our Lady of Guadalupe <laughs> or the Our Lady of Fatima? <laughs> <laughs> and, right. and he would roar laughing because of course they are both the blessed mother yes all right thank you thank you for giving clarity on that uh, as well uh, brother Kaloy and of course uh, father Rob me uh, just to share uh, brother Kaloy I, I live in Guadalupe Makati <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah so the church the national shrine of Our Lady of Guadalupe is just uh, you know a few steps away oh. from, from my place all right uh, Vina, what do you else got there? Questions. I think we have a lot of questions about Mother Mary, right? Because we celebrated the Immaculate Conception last week. So, Vince, would you like to take the next question? Yeah, so we have one question here mm -hmm. about Mary again. If Mary became pregnant with Jesus, when she conceived of the Holy Spirit, why is the first person of the Trinity considered Jesus, Father, instead of the Holy Spirit? Okay, we're in, in here to a question of, of Trinitarian theology. <laughs> in, in, in reality, you know, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are three different persons, but they are one God, all right? Mm -hmm. So it's not a matter of priority of who is in charge, who should be first, second, or third. They all have their mission. God the Father, we used to say in grade school, God the Father who created me. God the Son who redeemed me, God the Holy Spirit who sanctified me. And within that sanctification there, you have an immaculate conception, one in which she receives the gift of salvation immediately upon her conception, all right? And then the same is true of us when we're baptized, all right, is that we are full of grace. When we go to the sacrament of penance and we're forgiven, we, like Mary, are full of grace. The fact that she was immaculately conceived did not keep her from temptation. She had to 
in each singular moment make a decision. And each decision was a sinless decision. Through the temptation, she always made the most loving decision. That's why we say she was free of sin. So the advantage here is that she received the gift of salvation before we do, which is right after our birth or within a few months. But she received that gift right at the moment that she was conceived. And she was, therefore, you know, full of grace. Mr. C. Brother Kaloy, your oh, thoughts? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's the flow. Well, you can Brother go away Brother for a second before my answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, in reference to the Blessed Mother, the Father to the Blessed Mother, the Son to the Blessed Mother, and the Holy Spirit to the Blessed Mother, it is not actually... Uh, uh, the question about uh, God being the father but mm -hmm. uh, it's ad I I'd like to correct uh, the idea but it should be the blessed mother in reference to God the father is a daughter and the blessed mother in reference to Jesus is a mother mm -hmm. and the blessed mother in ref, in uh, re, in in relation to the Holy Spirit is a spouse. So, but uh, all of us, uh, in reference to God, the Father, of course, He is the Father. So I think that's why it is kind of confusing. Uh, we have to be clear on that. So, mm -hmm. in regard to the Father, with Mary, it's she is a daughter. Uh, yeah. Mary with Jesus, she is the mother. And yes. uh, with the Holy Spirit, a spouse. Uh -huh. Actually, that's how blessed she is. Yeah. Imagine all those uh, three significant relationships uh, mm -hmm. that she has with the Blessed Trinity. Wow. Yeah. It, it's, it, it's something new, Vina. Uh, it's something uh, trivial for me. Mm -hmm. with that. Uh, yes, Vince, yeah. you're saying something? Yeah, for me, um, we, we see the different phases of Mama Mary. It was discussed together with this uh, young Holy Trinity, right? I was being awakened because that's the beauty of the Catholic faith, no? That we get to see the faces of Mama Mary as well. It's like seeing faces of us every day. And yes. it's an opening also for me that Oh, I know. Daughter, son, mother, father, and then as a spouse, as a Holy Spirit. <laughs> it's a, uh, it, it, it gave me awareness of how, how we see it here in the Catholic yes. Church. And mm -hmm. mind you, uh, the Blessed Mother is really beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, this is something that is very common among visionaries. Mm -hmm. They would say the Blessed Mother is really beautiful. Mm -hmm. As Bishop Archbishop Fulton Sin would said, uh, would say, the world's first love because we were not given the opportunity to choose our mother, right? Yes. Because yes. we were already born with the mother, because our mother came first. Okay. But this time around, with God, God is the one who existed first because He's been existing from eternity yes. to eternity. Correct. Okay. That's why he was, he has the privilege of preparing his own mother. Mm -hmm. And if you'll be given the opportunity to choose your mother, will you choose a bad mother? <laughs> will you choose an ugly mother? <laughs> God himself chose his mother. So imagine how beautiful that woman is. Mm -hmm. That's why she's called the world's first love. First love. Galing. Beautiful, Mother, Mother Mary. Now let's uh, thank you for that, uh, Father Bob and Brother Kalai. Another, I think this is going to be the last question, right, Vince, about Mama Mary. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the question is, why did the church dogmatize Mary's perpetual virginity 
and the assumption. Basically and simply mm -hmm. is because through all of the ages of the church, everyone believed that. And the church formally, dogmatically they call it, or from the chair of Peter, said that if you are to be a Catholic, these two beliefs are essential about Mama Mary, about the Blessed Mother. And for example, the dogma of the Assumption, that's the last time, believe it or not, that the Pope spoke from the chair infallibly. Uh, Not since then has he done that, right? And the truth is that through generations, everyone believed almost from the very beginning that Mary was assumed bodily into, into heaven, right? Mary revealed herself as Brother Colloy strongly suggested uh, uh, at Lourdes, I am the Immaculate Conception. But the church had been, no one ever seriously debated. They just wanted to understand what it meant, but then, then they would formalize it in a dogma. In other words, in a proclamation that says, if you are Catholic, you must believe this. So that's how it came. It, it wasn't that the Pope just sat down one night and said, I believe that I should make the dogma, the assumption uh, an essential. No, everybody had already believed all of that. It's just that the church very formally and very from the chair infallibly proclaimed this to be the truth. And again, of course, we have to remember, I, I've mentioned this before, that the truths we declare about the Blessed Mother are actually truths about our Lord Jesus Christ. For example, our belief on the virginity of the Blessed Mother, why do we need to proclaim that? Why do we need to give importance to that truth? It's because with but with the Blessed Mother being virgin, it means that she got pregnant without any human intervention. Meaning to say, the real father of our Lord Jesus Christ is God the Father himself. Meaning to say, he is of divine, that he is really God who became man. So that's the reason why we proclaim the virginity of the Blessed Mother. So all these truths, the dogma, uh, the dogmas that we have about the Blessed Mother are actually truths that we would like to reinforce, that we would like to put emphasis on about our Lord Jesus Christ. It's wonderful, Father, uh, Brother Kaloy and Father Bob. Thank you for sharing that to us. And we have here one, one of our viewers via YouTube, which is Beads. She says, hi, watching here from Lano del Marte. Please pray for us from, from the Taipunis here. I would like also to ask the church, if our church preaches that Santa Claus is real? If not, do we also say that he isn't real? Yeah. So it's like a Christmas question. <laughs> <laughs> the church doesn't say anything about Santa Claus at all. <laughs> <laughs> there is no teaching on Santa Claus, positive okay. or negative. Or negative. We, we, everyone realizes, and we hope there's no children that are listening now, right now. The church realizes that this is a tradition which is worldwide and which is a beautiful fantasy, but you know, a beautiful sense of giving at Christmas time. But the church doesn't teach anything about Santa Claus, nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we're you, there, you know, with, with the typhoon, uh, uh, we're hoping that that is minimum in terms of anything that's destructive, particularly in loss of life. It seems like we get typhoons near Christmas every year. I remember Yolanda well, November yes. 8, 2013. And it seems like it's taking the same path as it did then. So we pray that it doesn't strengthen anymore. And we are praying for you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Brother Galen? Uh, the origin of Santa Claus is actually a commercial. Same. Okay. Coca-Cola? Coca yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> 
So yeah, that's I mean, why. You know, but the, yeah, but the, but the but the real Santa Claus is actually Saint Nicholas. Saint yes, Nicholas. that's what I know. Mm -hmm. And Saint Nicholas commercialized is Santa Claus. Okay. So, but uh, please be careful in revealing to the children that Santa of Claus is not real. Yes. Because I remember when uh, I came to know about the truth that Santa Claus doesn't exist, I was really devastated. And uh, I even <laughs> had a quarrel with my friends because uh -huh. they really believe in Santa Claus. So please uh, be careful. Do not devastate mm. uh, your child's uh, Christmas. So perhaps reveal the truth about Santa Claus after Christmas. Oh. Yeah, or if they become teenagers already. Oh, yeah. Let them enjoy mm. their childhood. But Pete, <laughs> ampin ka mo diha. I-appeal ko ka mo sa ako ang pag-ampo. Uh, take care. Diyan sa Lanao. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, since we were talking about Christmas, I think this is going to be our last question for you, Father Bob and Brother Galoy. Mm. Um, Christmas, as we all know, is all about kids giving us their wishes. Now, my question, our question for you, Father Bob and Brother Galoy, is what is your grown-up Christmas wish? Let me start with you, Brother Galoy. Come again, come again. What? what is your Christmas wish? Grown-up Christmas wish? Or basically, Christmas wish? Ano yung feeling mo ngayong Pasko? It's, a bit, it's, <laughs> it's actually very personal. <laughs> well, it's the same answer that I gave you before when you asked me yeah. about my prayer. Yeah. Actually, I do not wish for anything more because I, I believe I have been so much so much blessed already by the Lord with just with the truth that he became man, that uh, he chose to be born here in the world to prove that he loves me so much that he would like to forgive my sins. I cannot ask for more. But uh, I just I just would like to wish uh, for for the world that I hope the pandemic ends soon so that we can all go back to normal. Very selfless. Thank you for for that, uh, brother Kaloy. We share the same wish actually. Um, let me also hear from you, Father Bob. What is your grown up Christmas wish? Well, Christmas is about the unexpected, about surprise, as Father talked about earlier, and about finding the deepest meaning in Christmas. And that would be, you know, that I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I really don't. Mm -hmm. And that during this coming year, I look each day for some sort of surprise. And particularly to find that surprise in the people I meet, the people I minister to, the times I'm in confession, and so forth that somehow through this past 20 month, months that our Lord has prepared my priesthood, if you will, to be totally available to finally seeing people's eyeballs again and seeing people in person again and, and just a, a enjoying the explosion of joy that we'll have at our first huge feast gathering where we can throw away the masks. That's, that's, that's my Christmas wish. There's no doubt about it. I can think of nothing else. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for that, um, Father Bob. And also, Brother Galoy. So, Vina, um, anything else to, to... How about you, Vina? Let me ask you also, what is your grown-up Christmas wish? But don't ask me later, ha? <laughs> You're going to be the last... Steve, I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask, to ask <laughs> Shabar, we share all. You share also. Yes, uh, go ahead, okay. Miss Vina. So, sa akin, um, um, my grown-up Christmas wish... Every year to, no, is to have really a family gathering. Mm -hmm. But since I don't have my dad and my mom, na, my Christmas wish this year is that um, for, for those people to, mm -hmm. to see, to see God. Wow. To see God this Christmas. That even if we're, we're having a lot of things happening, um, I hope they can see, whenever they see the Christmas lights, the light bulb, they can see Jesus. 
that mm-hmm. oh there's there's hope that's my christmas wish that uh, that people get to to see that also as i mm-hmm. see it <laughs> yeah so about Thank you, you. <laughs> yeah, brother D. Ah, yeah. Um, you. Uh, okay. First and foremost, your your answers are uh, very beautiful. Um, I I was actually expecting very light answers from from Father Bob, brother Talay, and also you, uh, Sister Vina. But I never expected to receive very heartwarming answers. Okay, so let me. Uh, okay, so my Christmas wish is um. You know, for for everyone to to feel that as as soon as they step outside their respective homes, there's there should be nothing to to worry about because you know every single day when we step out, it's just like thinking, "Am I gonna make it uh, tomorrow?" Similar to Father Bob, um, "Am I gonna contract the virus myself? Am I going to spread it myself without knowing?" Okay. I just would like to to have that sense of feeling for everyone to to live without worries, but to live with with excitement and openness, with the surprises that Christ will be will be giving us. Because you know, when you live every single day with fear, with worry, you will not enjoy it to the full, right? So just you know, have that state of of grace, of belief that everything will be all right, and I should not worry because God is at my side. So I think that's that's my wish. On top of asking for, um, you know, food. <laughs> That's my <laughs> All right. But yeah, thank you so much, Father Bob, um, all the way from the States, Brother Kaloy, and Sister Vina, and the rest of our brothers and sisters who tuned in tonight. Um, but please don't go yet, friends, because we have, um, of course, uh, a special uh, prize for, every, for, for some lucky winners. But before that, can we request you, uh, Father Bob, to... Uh, Please uh, give us our uh, special Christmas closing prayer. Please. I will do that. It, it is one of the prizes, a coffee date with Brother Kaloy. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I think we can do that. We can, I'll message Sister Pat and Ace in the chat Very group. But yeah, we will do that. <laughs> let, us, let us pray. God, our Heavenly Father, this is the time of the year which Isaiah reminds us on Christmas Eve that the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who have walked in the land of gloom, a light has shone. How better to describe Christmas coming out of this pandemic that all will be new in 2022 and that we will be ecstatic for pure joy as the apostles were on the night that Jesus walked through the doors on the night of his resurrection. We pray, Lord, especially for the people who are experiencing the brunt of the typhoon, especially the most poor and vulnerable. Keep them safe, Lord. Keep their families safe. We pray for all those who watch Biblia Konia, who take time out of their day to listen to God's word. And he loves them so much for doing that, that they've chosen God and that they may become more aware, as St. Benedict says, of how much God loves them. And finally, Lord, we pray for our country. We pray for the Philippines, very important times coming up during these coming months. We pray, though, that especially the message at the deepest part of it might be truly caring for one another as citizens, caring for one another as Christians and Catholics, and caring for one another enough to sacrifice our own needs for the needs of those who are most vulnerable. And so we pray for the poor. We pray for those who are out of work. We pray for those who have lost their businesses, that they might be restored in 2022, and that we might be instruments through which they will discover joy again. And with that in mind, may our Lord Jesus be with you to protect you, go before you to guide you, stand behind you to give you strength, and walk this journey through 2022 with great hope and great joy. And to that and I extend my blessing to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Father Bob. So we're now at the point wherein we're going to uh, draw 10 lucky winners of 300 pesos worth of GCash plus a Bible wow. that is assigned by uh, our builder, Brother Didoy wow. himself. Right, again, friends, 10 winners of 300 pesos worth of GCash. Uh, and uh, a a a a uh, Bible with a special dedication from our builder, Brother Didoy. So, wow. Um, <laughs> wow. So, 
So uh, me and um, what do you call this one? Vina will be uh, calling out the names alternately, alternately. So medyo hindi lang siya clear tet, no. But sige, let's draw our first winner. 300 pesos plus five balls. Put the music. I love it. <laughs> Congratulations, Hernan Pakatang. Congrats. Next winner. Ang, ang ganda ng music. Wow. All great. right. We have beats from, from YouTube. Lanao. 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 Thank you. Congrats. Our, yes, congratulations. Our third winner, please. Ayan, Sister Karina Cortero. And also, belated happy birthday to you, Sister Karina. Enjoy. Congratulations. Fourth winner. We have Gavin from YouTube as well. Congratulations. Ooh. And we're off to our fifth winner. 300 pesos worth of Gcash plus Bible. Go ahead, Tet. Sister Lali Salazar, congratulations! Merry Christmas! Up to our sixth winner. Sixth. We have Dimple, congratulations! Dimple, congratulations, Dimple. Seventh winner, right? Yeah. And Malinda, what's the family name? Eusebio. Emmalinda Eusebio. Congratulations. Merry Christmas. Let's draw our eighth winner, please. For our eighth winner, we have Don Hasesnanita. Congratulations, brother. Brother Don prayed with us earlier. Sa rosary. Wow. Pang ilang winner na to? Pang eighth na ba? <laughs> Pang ninth na. Pang ninth na. Rafi, Mad Brother Rafi, Madwenyo, congratulations. Hello. Brother Rafi, thank you also for your comment. Nabasa namin. Thank you so much for being with us here in Bibliaconia. Is this the last winner, Vina? Yes, we have our last winner. Last winner of 300 pesos worth of GCash plus Bible. We have Kimberly De Luna. Congratulations, sister. Congratulations again to our 10 lucky winners of a 300 pesos worth of Gcash plus a Holy Bible with a special dedication from Brother D-Day. So to our lucky winners, please um, wait for the message of our uh, Feast Mall of Asia Bibliaconia admin on how you will get your prizes. But from what I knew is that you will be able to get your prize if you will be able to attend the live feast on January 2. And to make it easier also, if you're watching right now, if you're a winner, please contact the Feast Mall of Asia Facebook account, especially to uh, Beads and uh, the other winner yeah, from YouTube. Because they're far. Yes. Congratulations again and Merry, Merry Christmas. Enjoy. Congratulations. Yeah. Of yes, course, so um, we, ha then? we have a star sender. So yes. I want to give a shout out to Karina Portero for sending oh, 300 diba? stars. Wow. Uh, binalik lang kasi Karina also won 300 <laughs> tonight. So ha ha and a happy birthday also Karina. So before we go a few more announcements brothers and sisters. Go ahead. Oh Bina. yeah. For our first announcement, so this is our last session here at Father Michael mm -hmm. Bibliophonia. We want to thank you for being with us every Thursday night. And, and we'll nice. see you next year. We still have no schedule, right? On when in uh, January 2022, but definitely it's going to be in January 2022, brothers and sisters. We'll keep you posted uh, via our Facebook account. Uh, Vina, na commute ka lang, my friend. Oh, sorry. Yes. Okay, it got muted. So for second announcement, we have our, our love offering, as you can see in our screen. Um, this is how you give online. So you may tie it and give your love offering to our union bank or even go to the peacemallovation.com and give now. Or mm -hmm. also, just like I uh, mentioned earlier, someone sends stars. So you can also send stars. Yes. Thank you so our, much for always giving us uh, this sharing to us. Yeah, thank you for your generosity. And this just in, our next Biblioconia will be on January 6, 2022. First Thursday 
of the year. See you uh, by then, brothers and sisters. And we have a special gifts for everyone. We have our Feast Bay Area Christmas Feast schedule. So it's going to be uh, online on December 24, December 26, and December 31. Again, online on December 24, 26, and 31. And friends, this is it. We are going to have our first big grand feast on January 2, 2022 at the Ayala Malls Bay Area. It's going to be a big grand live-to-live face-to-face a grand feast gathering with uh, your favorite builders, priests, and uh, worship leaders, and the entire feast community. So friends, this is it. Uh, we're slowly getting back to normal, and we are all excited to see all of you in our first live face-to-face -face grand feast in 2022 happening on January 2 at the Ayala Malls Bay Area. See you, brothers and sisters. Right. Will you be there? Uh, will you will you be there, Father Bob? On no, January unfortunately, 2? no, because it'll be snowing. I won't be able to get there. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll be back hopefully the tenth of January, yeah. but uh, maybe I, I can watch the live stream. Yes, it's gonna be a beautiful. It's gonna be a big celebration, as everybody oh, missed, yeah. of course, because because currently, right, brother, uh, Father Bob, our uh, fee live feast is being held in uh, Bulacan. Barcelona right. Academy with limited atten attendance only. But this time on January, it's going to be big. It's going to be grand. Live face-to-face. -face. Uh, excited for that. All right. So thank you so much to you, brothers and sisters, for joining us uh, here in Father Michael Aguardia's um, uh, Biblia Conia for this year, 2021. Thank you to everybody who served with us in front and behind the camera. Thank you especially to you, Father Bob. To our new uh, newest family member here uh, this year, um, uh, Brother Kaloy, and of course, Sister Vina, and to everyone who, who have been with us at the start. So friends, we're going to see you again on January 6, 2022, as we are going to resume uh, this ministry that we have all together started. Please uh, enjoy the holiday season. Merry, Merry Christmas. And on behalf of Father Michael Aguardia's uh, Biblia Kuni again, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Peace, stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy, and stay hopeful. Salamat po, and see you next year. Christmas. Bye. See you. Bye-bye. Christmas. Merry Bye -bye. Christmas. Merry Christmas.